Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. Today, our focus is going to be on big blue cat, big flathead cat. Right now, it's about 60 degrees air temperature and 61 degrees on the surface. The water temp is slowly rising. These catfish should be getting active, which I'm sure they are. And we're using skipjack herring today. One of my favorite baits. Not the only bait I use, but one of my favorites. And I've got two rods right here rigged up with big, big baits, folks. Big baits. Big baits, big fish. All right, folks, as far as tackle, what I'm using are, I got a pair of these. Actually, I bought three, and I got them at trade day. Uh, $25 a piece. Can you believe that? I don't know where they get these reels at, but this is a pen rival 15 lw that's really a small reel narrow but it's got a big handle on it big handle and the gear ratio is five one and one it says 29 inches per turn so it's a pretty quick reel uh for level wind and i'm using a silver cat elite it's seven feet long and on it it's a b and m by the way they make good rods there ain't no doubt about it i have 40 pound test andy on this one now this one's an identical match to it it's uh the same thing except for i have 40 pound test red cajun now i'm using nine out circle hooks uh this is um eagle claw cigar circle hook with my leaders are ranging about 32 inches both of them big swivel a bead and a no roll two ounce sinker is what's holding it now i'm in 29 feet of water right now 29 feet i started off in about 15 to 20 feet of water so i'm gradually going deeper now i'm using big baits uh we'll cut one i'll show you how big a baits we're using big baits whoa i'm talking about big baits man big darn baits this one's still frozen but it, it'll thaw out right here in just a little bit this is a skipjack herring we'll just take him and hook him just like that remove that scale and that's it now it'll, it'll thaw out right here in just a little bit. I leave as much hook exposure as I can, folks. But that's what we're using. Now, rock throwing distance from here, it's about eight feet of water towards the bluff right here. So I'm right on the break line, right, right where it slopes down and flattens out. I'm fishing right there in that crease. Let's make another cast out there. I'm going to sit here no more than 20 minutes, folks. And if I don't get bit again, I'll just move. I'll move up the bluff a little bit. That's what I'm doing right now. Now, I don't know nothing about this. The holes that I fished this morning were empty. And they're good areas, too. They just wasn't any fish in them. The fish are deeper than what I thought they would be. So I'm fishing unfamiliar water. I'm going up the river. Know a lot of spots past that bridge, but from the bridge this way, I don't know anything, so I'm exploring. Let's lay this old head out there on it. There's fish. Let's, let's crank down on him. got him now this current is ripping this ain't a big fish let's go around this rod right here Ugh. even a small fish this is a blue cat 
I can tell. But even a small one, a pull in this current. <laughs> He's putting the steam on me now. We fixing to get a look at him right here. See what we got right here. Broke the ass. That's the main thing. <laughs> Let's put a net. Let's net him right here. Come on in here. What current's ripping? That's one thing about the Tennessee River. The current will rip. Well, are we going to get him? There we go. Not too bad, not too shabby. There he is, folks. Listen to him. Not too bad. Hey, some big fish down through here. Let's catch another one. Let's let this one go. Ow! Ow, 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 let go. It crunched down on my hand. Doggone thing. Let's let it go. Go on back. This is what I'm using for my leader. It's 50 pound test, Andy. I'm gonna cut a piece of it off about, oh, I got plenty of it. So I, three feet, three feet long. And I've shown this knot a lot of times, but I catch a lot of catfish with this particular knot and it's real quick to tie. It's called the knotless knot. Now this hook right here has an offset back. So this hook is designed for either a snail knot or a knot like this, but just run it through there like that and wrap it seven or eight times. Or whatever you want to, 10 or 12, it don't make any difference. Then take the other end and run it right back through there. Now, the reason I say this hook is designed for that knot is because you notice the line is, is in line with the hook shank. Okay. And, and that is a lot better than tying direct to this eyelet right here with a Palomar because it's not designed for that. So that, that's the deal right there. Now, folks, the last couple of fish that I caught, which I should have said something, I've been catching them by caught, uh, cutting them crossways like this in the chunks, not big chunks. They don't want big baits today. And, uh, and I figured that out finally. I was throwing too big of baits, I guess. But this is a belly cavity right here. And... I like to hook in the cavity like that. Now that's tough right there. And you see you have a lot of hook exposure and you'll you'll hook most of the fish and put them in a boat that, that bites like that. Uh, that belly cavity is a lot tougher than what it seems. And it, it works on bluegill or um, gizzard shad, any type of bait like that if you're cutting them crossways. Let's catch another one. I felt me a 30-foot hole right here. This is the deepest water I'm finding this area right here where I'm at. This little area here where I'm catching fish, it's just a 30-foot dip about the size of a small cow pond. And that's where these fish seem to be held up. Okay. We'll get that other one out. See if we can catch our another Here's one. We're gonna let him take it down. Yeah, he's got it. <clears throat> They're not going down, down the river with it today. <clears throat> Ooh. 
He just <laughs> strong fish in this current. I believe he's about the same size. He might be a little bigger. About the same. They're all ranging 12 to 14 pounds right in that neighborhood. But God, they're strong. That one might be a little bigger than that. Let's see what we got. My, my. Quiet. Well. That's enough. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's a little bit bigger than that. Good fish. They're getting a little bigger. Y'all watch that rod right there. It could go off any time. Ooh. All right, boy. Ow! Every one of them's like that. They want to bite the far out of me. I ain't got no gloves. <laughs> Quiet. You'll just have to bite. He was a little bit bigger than I thought. A little bit. <sighs> Boy, they like to bite, folks. <sighs> There's a yacht. The USS Manor. A coming by. Let's let him go. Go on back. I was gonna gentle release him and you can't. You can't do that. They wanna bite the far from me. See that old yacht? What a big old wave. Just big old boat. Say, my dog's bigger than your dog. My dog's bigger than yours. Hey, woo! My dog's bigger than your dog. My dog's bigger than your. Let's lob that one out in the other way. Well, right in there is where the hole is. There's a few fish held up in that hole. It's just an indention where they get down in it and they can avoid a lot of this current. They just hunker down in it. Let's do her again there, Elmo! Look yonder. I can't really tell, folks. Meaning I, I can't tell how big he is. But he's fighting. There he is. Blue cats do that. They'll shoot up to the top. Flathead won't. They'll stay on the bottom. Man. This is a pretty fish right here. Short, fat, dumpy. Man, he's strong too. Stop it. Look at him. You don't do that. Hey, hey. No. Got the power. Look at him. That little fish is whooping me. Let's see if we can net him. That's enough of that. Enough's enough. That fish was powerful for his size. But I'm going to tell you, I like these little pin reels. I do. They'll handle fish. If I hook a big old 100 pounder out here, folks, I would catch him. But I ain't had the opportunity. Not yet. Two, I call them small blues. Fun fish, though. They're fun. Whoa! Dog gone. I'm talking about 
29 feet of water is the key right now. Quit, quit, quit. Woo! He's like crunching down, folks. That ain't really a bad fish. You know, when it comes to fishing, I don't gripe. Whatever happens in a day's time or a few hours' time, well, it's still a blessing to be out here. Pretty fish, though. Well proportioned. A lot more than the first one. Let's let him go. All right, boy. I appreciated that. There he goes. God, what a stout fish. Well, folks, that's about the end of it. One thing about it, though, I've broke the grizzly in. Uh, as far as catching catfish today, we didn't catch no gigantic one, but we caught a lot of fish. What a blessing. And also, let me show y'all something. I didn't have any choice at all. The Tennessee River gets real swift. That 40 pound thrust that came on this boat, it just wouldn't, wouldn't do it. It just didn't have enough power. What I got, is a Minn Kota Fortrix. It's a saltwater trolling motor made by Minn Kota, and it's 80 pound thrust called Riptide. And I sure do like it. And I also have a switch right here on the floor for it. And it's variable speed, reverse, forward. Hey, I, I tell you, I had to spend a little, but sometimes you do when it comes to the sport of fishing. All righty, folks. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for spending a few minutes out here in the great outdoors with me, enjoying a sport that we all love, and that is the sport of fishing. I want to say thank y'all very much. Hey. And did I mention, God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey, dog. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.